ever feel like um like trying to get your head around L and D is like you know when you get off a flight and you've got those headphones in your bag. Oh yeah. And they're all tangled up. Totally. It feels like that sometimes. So many moving parts. I feel that. Well, good news is today's deep dive. We're going to try to create a clear and actionable framework for L and D. We're going deep with insights from Guy W. Wallace. He's a veteran L and D consultant. He's worked with over eighty companies. Yeah. Big names like General Motors. Wow. HP, Siemens, you name it. Yeah, Wallace. He really like gets down to the nitty gritty in his book, assessing the L and D function. Okay. And he uses these really interesting visual models. Like he actually calls one the clock face model. Okay. To help you visualize the whole L and D process. A clock face model. All right, you've got my attention. Yeah. So his big idea is to like kind of stop thinking about L and D as just like a department and more like its own business within your business. Okay. Just like any other business unit. Yeah. L and D should be you know laser focused on ROI. That makes sense. I mean, you wouldn't launch a new product without a clear idea of how it was going to perform. Right. So we shouldn't really treat training any differently. Exactly. Exactly. And to help us understand this whole business within a business concept, he breaks a high functioning L&D department into 12 interconnected subsystems. OK. And he visualizes it again with this clock face model. OK. Where like each number on the clock represents a different subsystem. All right. I'm picturing a clock right now. Walk me through it. So. You've got your leadership subsystems, uh -huh. things like governance and strategic planning. Mm -hmm. Think of these as like setting the overall direction. Okay. Then you've got your core subsystems, okay. which are all about the actual design, development, and delivery of like learning programs, mm -hmm. the nuts and bolts, if you will. Right. And then finally, there are the support subsystems, okay. like marketing and communications or human resources, which, you know, they keep everything running smoothly behind the scenes. So it's about making sure that all these different parts are working together seamlessly like a well-oiled clock to deliver on those L&D goals. Exactly. But, and this is where it gets really interesting. Okay. Wallace doesn't just describe these subsystems. Right. He gives you a concrete way to assess how effectively each one is functioning within your own organization. Mm. Okay, so... No more fuzzy feelings about whether or not L&D is doing its job. We're talking about real data-driven assessment here. Tell me more about how that works. He provides this quick assessment tool. Okay. And it's based on identifying clues and cues. Mm -hmm. Think of these as red flags. Okay. Subtle signals that a particular process within a subsystem might need some attention. Give me an example. What would a clue and cue look like in action? Let's say one of your L&D goals is to improve um, employee retention. A clue could be that you're seeing high turnover in like a specific department. Right. Now the cue comes into play. Mm -hmm. You dig a little deeper and you discover that new hires in that department aren't receiving adequate onboarding or training. That disconnect, mm -hmm. that's your clue and cue that something needs to change. Okay, that's a really practical way to look at it. So it's about spotting those patterns and connecting the dots between what's happening on the ground and how well your L&D systems are or aren't supporting your goals. I like it. Exactly. And the best part is once you've identified these clues and cues, his framework helps you figure out what to do next. I'm ready to get into the nitty gritty of how this assessment works. Let's take those 12 subsystems. Where do we even begin? Well, I mean, instead of like trying to boil the ocean. Right. Tackle all 12 at once. Right. Wallace recommends focusing on a few you know, key areas to start. Okay. Remember, it's all about making L&D a business. Right. So let's think strategically. We could choose one subsystem from each of those tiers. Okay. Leadership, core, and support. Okay. To get a good like cross section. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. All right. Let's start with something from leadership. Yeah. How about L and D strategic planning? Okay. That's like level one of building any successful business, right? Makes sense. You got to have a plan. Right. What are some clues and cues that your strategic planning might need a little work? Wallace says a big one is if your L&D programs feel more like a collection of like random acts of training okay. than a like cohesive strategy, you might be offering a course on, say, public speaking, right? right? But is there a business reason behind it? Okay. Will it actually help move the needle on your company's goals? So instead of just being like a training order taker, right. L&D should be proactively looking for ways to align with those bigger business goals. Exactly. And those goals should be measurable. Okay. Like, 
If your company's strategic plan includes improving customer satisfaction, right. then your L&D strategy should include ways to measure how your training programs actually impact customer satisfaction. I see. So it's not enough to just assume that training is helpful. You need proof. Yes. Okay, so that's strategic planning. What about a core subsystem? Let's talk about product and service line development acquisition. Okay. Essentially, this is all about how you're designing and developing your learning programs. Okay, so this is where we're getting into the nitty gritty of creating, engaging, effective training content. Right. What should we be looking out for here? One of Wallace's biggest clues is if your L&D team is constantly scrambling to create new programs in reaction to like every little fire drill. Oh, yeah. That suggests that you might be stuck in like reactive mode instead of being proactive and anticipating future needs. Yeah. And I imagine that that can lead to like burnout. Absolutely. L&D departments if you're constantly putting out fires instead of working strategically. Yeah. And it can also mean that you're missing opportunities to be more intentional with your L&D strategy. That makes a lot of sense. So how do we move from reacting to strategizing when it comes to our L&D programs? Well, Wallace would say this is where that shift from uh, learning by chance to learning by design comes into play. Okay. Instead of just delivering training on demand, you're thinking strategically about what skills and knowledge your employees will need to succeed in the future. Learning by design, I love that. Right. It's about being intentional, proactive, and aligned with those big picture goals. Precisely. All right, ready to tackle a support subsystem. Hit me with it. Let's talk about L&D marketing and communications. Interesting. Okay, explain why this one's so important. Because even the most like brilliantly designed training program is useless if nobody knows about it. Right. Or if they don't understand its value. It's like that old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Right. You can offer amazing training, but you can't make employees be excited about it. Exactly. Wallace would say that you need to treat your L&D programs like any other product launch. You need to market them effectively to your target audience. So how do we do that? What are some clues and cues that our L&D marketing might need a little boost? One red flag is if you're seeing like low enrollment in your programs. Okay. Or if employees are consistently giving you feedback that they weren't aware of certain training opportunities, okay. that tells you that there's a communication breakdown happening somewhere. Okay. That's a really practical way to look at it. So instead of just sending out like mass emails right. about every training under the sun, yeah. we need to be more targeted and strategic with how we communicate with our employees about L&D opportunities. Exactly. And think beyond just email. Okay. You can leverage internal social media platforms. Right. Create engaging videos that like showcase the value of your programs. Yeah. Even partner with team leaders to help spread the word. Those are great ideas. I can already see how helpful it would be to have like a marketing mindset when it comes to L&D. Yes. So we've covered a few key subsystems. Yeah. But what about the big picture? How do we know if all of these moving pieces are actually working together effectively? That's the million dollar question, right? We can put all these pieces in place, mm -hmm. but how do we actually measure the impact of L&D? How do we know if it's delivering on that business within a business promise? Well, Wallace is a huge, huge proponent of like tying everything back to data. Okay. He's like, stop relying on gut feelings and start yeah. tracking metrics that actually matter to the business. Right. Think about it. You wouldn't run a marketing campaign without like looking at your conversion rates, right? right. L&D deserves the same level of uh, rigor. Yeah, it's about proving the value of what we're doing, yeah. right? No more hiding behind fluffy metrics. Exactly. You need to be able to answer the question, what is L&D actually doing for our company's bottom line? Right. Like, are our training programs leading to increased productivity, mm -hmm. improved customer satisfaction, higher retention? Right. If you don't have those answers. You're going to struggle to get buy-in from leadership and secure the resources that you need. It's like we've been saying throughout this whole deep dive, right? L&D is not just a cost center. Right. It's a strategic investment. Yes. But we need to be able to prove that. Absolutely. And that proof comes from data. Okay. Wallace actually gives some like really interesting examples of how to measure the real-world impact of L&D in his book, right? Yeah. It's not just about tracking how many people sat through a training session. Right. It's about digging deeper and and looking for those connections to business outcomes. Can you give me an example? What would that look like in practice? Let's say you've implemented like 
a new sales training program. Okay. Instead of just tracking attendance. Yeah. You could track the sales performance of those who completed the training compared to those who didn't. Okay. Or you could look at customer satisfaction ratings before and after the training is rolled out. You might even be able to like draw a connection between the training and things like employee retention in your sales department. I'm starting to see how powerful this can be. If you can actually demonstrate how your L&D programs are impacting the bottom line, yes. suddenly you're not just a training provider, right. you're a strategic partner. Exactly. And that's the ultimate goal, right? Yeah. To have L&D be seen as a valuable asset to the business, right. not just a department that delivers training. You know, I came into this deep dive feeling a little overwhelmed, honestly, by all the moving parts of L&D. Sure. But I'm walking away feeling energized yeah. and inspired. Yeah. Wallace has given us such a clear framework for understanding not just what to do, right. but why it matters. It's huge. Yeah. And I think that's key for any L&D professional who's really looking to make a difference. Absolutely. So as we wrap up this deep dive into L&D assessment, yeah. I want to leave our listeners with one final thought. Okay. Wallace argues that even like seemingly simple training programs. Yeah. Like time management. Right. Should be assessed for their ROI. Interesting. So. If your company offers this type of training, yeah. ask yourself, do we know it's making people more productive? Right. Or is it just a feel-good checkbox? Good question. That's something to think about as you continue on your own L&D journey. Keep asking those questions. Yes. Keep experimenting. Yeah. And most importantly, keep learning by design. Yeah.